Hey up guys, what's going on and welcome back to the Breakfast Save. Well, I'm just going to run you through all the transfer dealings of the January period that has just occurred. First of all, a bunch of loan signings have gone out. Staunton, Gibson and Colville. You've seen them all at some point, but now we have players who are playing far more often than they were. They've gone out on loan just because they weren't getting games. Ishwood has gone out because his potential doesn't match up with any of the rest of our def defensive prospects, including Staunton. So he's been gone for he's gone for 20k, he's out. Now the big ones here are Riley first. He went at the beginning of this. He basically came to me asking for a new contract. His contract runs out in the summer, so I was kind of keen to get him on a new contract, but then he offered more than the club was even willing to accept on the higher end of the boundaries. So he went to Sunderland for 550k because they came in for him and they managed to negotiate up, up to 550,000. So he's gone. Scannell is the big one though. 4 million nearly for Scannell. Now the finances at the moment were I'm only getting 40%, so I didn't see 4 million. I saw 1.4 million come out of that. Hopefully now that we're in the black, they'll uh, they'll go back off that 40% and give me more transfer income going forward. But Scannell has gone for 4 million to Stoke. Couldn't really turn it down is basically the problem here. 4 million for one of my players right now. The financial stability from that transfer alone is worth it, in my opinion. He's not actually that amazing on the grand scheme of things. He was, was one of our, he is one of our better players, but he's not outstanding by any means. He is performing reasonably well. He is high on the goal scoring list. He has put in, obviously, quite a lot of great performances over the year and a half so far. We've done this, but 4 million... Couldn't really turn it down. And when you consider his replacement here, I've got in from Hertha Berlin's second string for £200,000 and we've sold him for £4 million. I'll just show you Simon Kurt. Simon Kurt's wage is quite ridiculous though. However, for £200,000, I will let that wage go for now. Corners, finishing, free kick, long shots, flair, pace, agility, acceleration, all in the yellow, all above 14. Crossing, dribbling, first touch, passing, all also fairly excellent. Techniques 13 too, as is off the ball. So all the places where, let me just bob this on inside wing, inside forward. All the places where inside forwards work, he has excellent stats. That is one thing to also mention. He is a natural winger on the left and can play AMC fairly naturally as well. However, he is left footed. So he does fit that inside forward role on the right hand side. I am going to have to develop him there. He's not particularly happy playing there right now, but he will be soon. And if I just show you the comparison with Scowl, You'll see what I mean. Yeah, so there we are. Sold Scanlon for four million, brought in Scene and Kurt for two hundred thousand pounds, and he is marginally better on the technicals, marginally worse on the mentals, and marginally worse on the physicals. So, not a lot to differentiate the two, considering the difference in the price. Scanlon's on also about four times his wage he was here at Stoke, so I couldn't really. He probably would have been really mad if I didn't let him go anyway and wouldn't have played so it was in my best interest to let him go regardless in all aspects of the deal in the end i did stall it for a week because i just i felt like i couldn't do it but then i realized once my brain kicked in i had to do it really but really physicals for the most part this balance one is the weird one where he's much worse but if you look at the technicals here free kick takers actually dedicated free kick specialist and corner specialist too Pretty helpful, but 15 finishing, he's actually the best finisher in the squad, I think. So for the rest of the transfers, first of all is the striker I said I was going to get on a loan. This is the one I selected, it is Mason Greenwood from Man United. I'm paying a fair bit for, to have him here, actually, but finishing first touch fit, uh, 14s, like I said, Sander has got better finishing. Physical's all good, mental's mostly good, the technicals that matter are mostly good, so he's coming on loan for the rest of the season. Hopefully a better clinical goal scorer that I was looking for. Now, annoyingly, over January, Saramago Sutta is scoring, but that's a good problem to have right now. Now, the other thing to mention here is his contract ends at the end of the year, I think, uh, anyway. So I'm not sure if that's just because that's when the loan ends or that's when his actual contract ends, but I'll just keep an eye on him anyway because he might be a good player to bring in. He has been at Man United since 2017, so his contract might actually genuinely be up at the end of the season. So I'll keep an eye on that, and we might get him in permanently at the end of the year. Next up is Matt Nichols from Cardiff Met Uni. Now, we went for a deep dive once the uh, scannel, whilst I was stalling the scannel, basically. Whilst I was stalling on the scannel, we went on a deep dive, tried to find replacements for him. And I find this guy in Wales because, you know, Wales is one of those ones where you can often get a good player. Uh, we obviously got Garwin Spencer last year, a potential goalie, although I think he's going to have competition with Louise now in that goal role. Excellent physicals for Matt Nichols. In fact, he has 
better physicals than Stein and Kerr does, I think. However, the rest of it is a little bit to be desired. But he's 18, he's homegrown already, because that's great, and he does have five star potential, potentially five-star potential ability. Only two-star now, but he's the backup for that right-hand side now, because... I mean, I've got Darcy who can play both sides, but he is backup. Essentially, in case anyone gets injured, then we've definitely got a right side of player we can bring in here. He's either footed as well, which is great. Very average in obviously main areas. Acceleration, very good in physicals. And determination is 17, so that's absolutely excellent. So hopefully he's got the determination to develop. That's great. He costs 500 pounds and he's on 450 quid a week as well for four years. I think we can maybe get away with this one if it doesn't go right. And then finally is another English player already homegrown as well. The replacement for Riley. This one is actually a slight step back, but he did cost me 200,000 less than he was sold for. So when you weigh it up, it probably works out better. He's on less wages as well. He's got a couple of good stats already and just very average in everything else at this point. But again, developing positions, a lot of developing potential, hopefully. He's actually never played at any club he's been at. But we got him from Bristol Rovers for 350,000. It was a little bit much, but there is obviously a premium on English players. And I was very conscious of getting in English players. And there was a rather fittingly a Portuguese player I had on the uh, on the prospect list for this uh, defender right position once Roddy left. However, I actually literally just ran out of time in the transfer window for him to be signed. But we did get this guy through the doors before that happened. So he's actually going to be playing back up to Mella at the moment. And I probably will bring him in over the course of the rest of the year. So you may not see him straight away. I think he's on the bench for this Brentford game. But let me just show you those matches first. So here's January. It started with immediately losing to Blackburn after the undefeated December. But then we beat Southend in the FA Cup. Beat Wigan, who were third at the time, 2-0. Fulham 2 all away. Derby 0-0 at home. And then we lost to Bristol City in the FA Cup. That's not too much of a problem. We're out of all the cups now, so just the championship to deal with. No, nothing, no other distractions. So that's good. One win and two draws from this period was actually really good. We're going to third. Fulham were obviously recently relegated and still have most of their players. So a very good side to be drawing against two all. We're actually undefeated against Fulham. We beat them at home early in, early in the year. And then Derby are obviously in the playoff hunt. So we are 14th currently with 40 points. They say safe is 50 points. So 10 points we need for the rest of the season to be safe. Hopefully we can start that now with playing Brentford away who are one place ahead of us, and Stoke at home after that, who are currently seconds. Two good tests for us right now, starting with Brentford. As we can see here, the back line is Correa, Garcia, O'Connor, Mella, and Sergio Luis in goal. Now, Golovovic is still just returning to fitness. You can probably see it just at the bottom there on the right-hand side. So I'm not going to start him today. Sergio Luis is going to play here. Ferreira, O'Brien, Coventry, no changes there. Texera on the left, Simon Kurt on the right, on the inside for a roll. Get him learning. And Sarah Margo up front. Now, we do have agreement on the bench, as we do also have Chad Lamb, who I'm just going to have to give a number to before we play this. But yes, there we go. Not a lot of change in terms of the first 11, other than Scowl going out. In fact, I wasn't even really playing Riley by the time he left. So not a lot of change there, to be honest. So they've got James Tavernier. I reckon remember him from Newcastle days. Yeah, good team talk. I have switched to 2D because I just want to see how it goes. I want your feedback on this as well. I have started doing this in the meantime as well in the matches you haven't seen. But I just want to see your feedback on 2D versus the natural 3D that we do here. Now, this game is already disappearing. Garcia has been booked. But we are already on top of this slightly. And here's a highlight. So Coventry over the free kick, which hits their goalie. But somehow we are very on top of this match. Oh, Mohica? Graham? That's a very different type of name. Graham, Graham, still going. And that seemed like a really easy save for Louise, but I imagine it was actually a bit harder considering it was a highlight. Didn't see his name taking the corner. Emiliano, Judge, Judge took that. Judge out and gets it in the middle. Seen and Kirk guy. Jean Vier, Jean Vier. Don't know how he's supposed to be nice that. And the highlight ends. Oh, that was a wor worthwhile highlight. Here we go again though. Bentley on the goal kick. Lands on Thierry, who gives it to their player, Force. But it's back to Thierry anyway. Who gives it to Texera, who is going to square across maybe to Coventry. Yes, there we go. Who just hoops it at their, well, Tavernier. And this is a lot of ding-donging back and forth possession-wise here. Oh, this is a chance for Sarah Margo to clean onto this. But that's not the highlight. Where is this going? Oh, that's where it's going with it. A ridiculous three ball to Emiliano, who scores. Well... That is, as they say, against the runner play. I mean, watch this in 3D. This is ridiculous. 
We don't even play a high line, to be honest. Just carved through us. I am disappointed at that. Anyway, well, I get to tell them they're disappointed at halftime, which is happening round about now. Uh, so despite being on top of that, they... Well, well, my mouse just sort of glitched there and went straight through the team talk. Great. I really need a new mouse. It keeps playing up. It won't let me hold down the bun. And that time when I tried to not hold down the bun, it did. I said that doesn't backfire. Maybe they'll just take me walking in and walking out without saying anything as inspiration of its own. Terry's on the ball here. Back to Louise. We're five minutes into this half. Louise is going to do something. There we are. Give it to O'Connor. And that is a cutting through ball for Sarah Margo. I'm not sure what happened there with their defenders. Well, we've got one of our own. Ninth goal of the season. Sarah Margo is now in the lead. He actually will be ahead of Scal at this point in terms of goals in total. So, yes, like I say, he has started scoring, which is great. But O'Connor pulls out basically an identical move. Let's see what happens here in 3D. I, I'm not sure what their defender's done there, but that's basically an identical, identical goal back again. I will take that for sure. I don't know what happened there. The defender there, he always went, I'm not going to go for it. I am. I don't know if Sao Margo deliberately decided to dummy him there. Coventry's being booked and he usually gets tired, so I might just give him the benefit of 30 minutes free time here. We'll get Norman on for Coventry, just to give him a bit of a rest. And uh, save that booking. Well, Chad Lamb can have his debut here because Mel is not playing amazingly well. And for the third change, I'm just swapping Texera over to the right and bringing our young player Lopez in on the left-hand side. Because Seen and Kurt was getting complacent and isn't also playing that great either. And there is a highlight here for them. Tavernier just gives it to Sawyers in the middle. Mokotjo. Oh god, I've butchered that to Mohika. That's easier to say. And we intercept that, but it goes, does go back to their player again. Are we going to nick this off Mokoto here and run away with it? Yes, we sort of are. Norman here running and getting... Nope, Texera, uh, who's going to square it wide further for Lamb. First time we've really seen him in action. That just hits John VA, but where is this going now? He clears that up to Bogle, who is clear, but we recover in time. Graham is probably going to let Emiliano through. No, he's going to smack it at Louise. And that was the entire highlight, folks. 1-1 away at Brentford, O'Connor, O'Brien, probably the end of the game here, but Ferreira, Norman, back to O'Brien, just passing it around our middle. Maybe a bit more urgency here wouldn't go amiss, if we're honest. Thierry, out on the right side, maybe just enough time for one more attack, attack here, get this in the middle somehow. Thierry, swing it in, swing it in. Number 10 on the right side there, it's clean through. No, not anymore though. Lamb, can you swing it in? No. Well, 1-1 one, one away. I'm not happy with that performance, and I've told them as such. But 1-1 away isn't too bad, but they are, more, they are fired up for this Stoke game at home now, which is probably slightly more the benefit right now of doing that. Now, I'll bring you the lineup for that very shortly. This shortly, in fact. So, only change here is I'm going to put Lamb on in the right-back position from the start of the game, not changing literally anything else. So they line up identically, a lot of names probably still recognisable here. Shawcross, Allen, Bojan, Peters. Bauer is a player I would have really liked to have, but didn't have the budget. Yeah, some motivation, some happiness, we'll take it. And so we get kicked off for the Stoke game. Now we are in the well, maroon, I guess it is. Stoke in the white. Martins in, oh, that's gone in already. That's disappointing. But it's one minute in, we won't change anything up. So we'll see that again in 3D now. Whip that in and yeah. Defenders and the goalie don't really give themselves much glory there. We'll see how this match sort of settles down more effectively now. You see us starting to get into it on the stats. So I think we do need to get into this a little bit better, but Lamb has a throw in here for Ferreira. We are in a good position. Terry completely on his own over this side, briefly. O'Brien gets that nicked off him, but... Bojan is going to get on to that, I think. Yes, he is. There we go. Uh, sort of hustled off his side, but that will get to a phobie. And he, well, saved. It's a corner, but this was from open play, so I'm not expecting much. Although the last one went in, so you never know. Texera gives it a cut. And that's hoofed clear. Yep. See if we can get into this a little bit more. We're not really playing that well. Uh, we did draw with Stoke earlier in the season, but 
not doing so well at home for some reason. Now, they're passing across their back line and back again once more. Martin Zindi out to Bojan, who probably never really expected to be playing in the championship when he was at Barcelona. I think he was at Barcelona, wasn't he? That's... Well, I was about to say, that's 2-0, but Correa has saved us. Belinden. That was a highlight. Oh, Valinden again on a free kick. Oh, that was a cheeky one. Still fairly well wide. For... Okay, this is all Stoke and I'm getting slightly worried. How do I change? Oh, no, we're on the ball. Coventry. Tries to work out what to do with the ball. And does punt it up to Sarah Margo, who will get on that and get past number 17 there. And just miss, really. A tight angle, but decent chance. He's now motivated and fired up as halftime hits us. I'm going to calmly say we're, I'm disappointed. Get back out there. Didn't make the same mistake as last time. Did actually get a team talk in. Oh, Texera's been booked, but none of our team are playing really well. Kurt is disinter disinterested. Why is he not playing? Why is he not really caring? Lamb. Back to Allen on their side. Okay. Josebed, Josebed. Oh, that's a... Well... Well, they're celebrating, rightly so. I mean, that's a goal. Lam heads it out to Alan here, who gives it to Josebed, who is not being marked at all in any way, shape or form. And, well, I think the reason is in a different time zone there, because he's jumping before he's even hit it. So we need to change this up drastically right now. So if we can get someone up the pitch, Jim O'Brien is not playing well, so we are going to get Greenwood on up here. To a front, a little bit jiggery pokey with the rolls, and here we go. Now let's get. Mm, don't really want to go attacking, attacking. I don't want to leave us wide open. Scannels come on for them. Oh no, he's going to score, isn't he? Well, literally nothing's happened. Literally nothing has happened. I made two more changes there, and off we go again once more. Will any highlight happen in this second half? No. Because this is the end of game highlight, one presumes. One presumes correctly. That was a poor match, yes, as it says at the bottom, but okay. Yeah, I'm really not happy with that performance. In fairness, their goals were a wonder goal and first minute. So maybe work to be done on defending corners. But I'll bring you back next time in, well, maybe West Ham and Swansea, two big teams there. West Ham in, currently in the mid-table, and Swansea in first again. Uh, we beat them earlier in the season at home. They were first at that point as well. They did drop off briefly, but now they are back in first. So maybe West Ham and Swansea, I think, next. That's probably around re, uh, regen day as well, so youth intake day. So we may be able to get our youth intake at that point as well. So there we are. I would join you back then for those games, but until then... Sure.